The Convair F-106 Delta Dart was the primary all-weather interceptor aircraft of the United States Air Force from the 1960s through to the 1980s. Designed as the so-called ultimate interceptor, it proved to be the last specialist interceptor in U.S. Air Force service to date. It was gradually retired during the 1980s with the COF-106 drone conversions of the aircraft being used until 1998 under the PACER-6 program. The F-106 was the ultimate development of the USAF's 1954 interceptor program of the early 1950s. The initial winner of this competition had been the F-102 Delta Dagger, but Early versions of this aircraft had demonstrated extremely poor performance, limited to subsonic speeds and relatively low altitudes. During the testing program, the F-102 underwent numerous changes to improve its performance, notably the application of the area rule to the fuselage shaping and the change of engine and the dropping of the advanced MEX-11 79 fire control system and its replacement with a slightly upgraded version of. The MX-1 already in use on subsonic designs. The resulting aircraft became the F-102, and in spite of being considered barely suitable for its mission, the Air Force sent out a production contract in March 1954, with the first deliveries expected in the following year. By December 1951, the Air Force had already turned its attention to a further improved version the F-102. Initially, the main plan change was the replacement of the uh, model's Pratt Whitney J-57, itself replacing the original Jarvie, with the more powerful Bristol Olympus produced under license as the Wright J-67. By the time this would be available, the MX-1179 was expected to be available and was selected as well. The result would be the ultimate interceptor the Air Force wanted originally. However, while initial work on the Olympus appeared to go well, by August 1953, Wright was already a full year behind schedule in development. Continued development did not resolve problems with the engine, and in early 1955, the Air Force approved the switch to the Pratt Whitney Chesney 5. The Jevon D-5 was somewhat larger than the J-50 says the F-100 2 and had greater mass flow. This demanded changes to the inlets to allow more airflow, and this led to the further refinement of using a variable geometry inlet duct to allow the intakes to be tuned to best performance across a wide range of supersonic speed. This change also led to the ducts being somewhat shorter. The fuselage grew slightly longer and was cleaned up and simplified in many ways. The wing was slightly enlarged in area and a redesigned vertical tail surface was used. The engine's two position afterburner exhaust nozzle was also used for idle thrust control. The nozzle was held open, reducing idle thrust by 40% giving slower taxiing and less brake wear. A mock-up with the expected layout of the MX-1179, now known as the M01, was inspected and approved in December 1955. With growing confidence that the aircraft was now improving, an extended production contract for 17 B-102 buffs was sent out on 18 April 1956. On 17 June, the aircraft was officially redesignated as the F-106A the first prototype F-106, an aerodynamic test bed, flew on 26 December 1956 from Edwards Air Force Base, with the second fitted with a fuller set of equipment. Following 26 February 1952, initial flight tests at the end of 1956 and beginning of 1957 were disappointing, with performance less than anticipated, while the engine and avionics proved unreliable. These problems and the delays associated with them nearly led to the abandoning of the program, but the Air Force decided to order 350 F-106 instead of the planned 1,000. After some minor redesign, the new aircraft, designated F-106A, were delivered to 15 fighter interceptor squadrons along with the F-106B-2 seat combat, capable trainer variant. 
Starting in October 1959, on 15 December 1959, Major Joseph W. Rogers set a world speed record of 1525.96 miles per hour, 2455.79 kilometers, in a Delta Dart at 40,500 feet, 12,300 meters. That year, Charles E. Myers flew the same model aircraft at 1544 miles per hour. Similar to the F-102, the F-106 was designed without a gun or provision for carrying bombs, but it carried its missiles in an internal weapons bay for clean supersonic flight. It was armed with four Hughes AIM-4 Falcon Air-to-air -air missiles. The first ejection seat fitted to early F-106s was a variation of the seat used by the F-102 and was called the F. Weber interim seat. It was a catapult seat which used an explosive charge to propel it clear of the aircraft. This seat was not a zero-zero seat and was inadequate for ejections at supersonic speeds as well as ground-level ejection. The second seat that replaced the Weber interim seat was the supersonic rotational B seat, called the supersonic bobsled, hence the B designation. It was designed with supersonic ejection as the primary criterion since the F-106 was capable of Mach 2 performance. Fighter pilots viewed high-speed ejections as the most important. Seat designers viewed an ejection at low altitude and slow speed as the most likely possibility. The ejection sequence with the B seat was quite complicated and there were some unsuccessful ejections that resulted in pilot fatality. The third seat that replaced the Convair B seat was the Weber 00ROCAT for rocket catapult seat. Weber Aircraft Corporation designed a 00 seat to operate at up to 690 miles per hour. Supersonic ejections were rare and ejections at relatively low altitudes and low speeds were more likely. The Weber 00 seat was satisfactory and was retrofitted to the F-106 after 1965. The F-106 served in the contiguous U.S., Alaska, and Iceland, as well as for brief periods in Germany and South Korea. The F-106 was the second highest sequentially numbered PF aircraft to enter service under the old number sequence. The F-111 was highest before the system was reset under the 1962 United States Tri-Service Aircraft Designation System. In service, the F-106's official name, Delta Dart, was rarely used, and the aircraft was universally known simply as the 6, although contemplated for use in the Vietnam War. The F-106 never saw combat, nor was it exported to foreign users, Following the resolution of initial teething problems, in particular an ejection seat that killed the first 12 pilots to eject from the aircraft, its exceptional performance made it very popular with its pilot. After the cancellation of their own Avro Arrow, the Canadian government briefly considered purchasing the F-106. The F-106 was progressively updated in service with improved avionics, a modified wing featuring a noticeable conical camber, an infrared search and track system, streamlined supersonic wing tanks, which provided virtually no degradation to overall aircraft performance. Features like an in-flight refueling receptacle and an arrest door hook for landing emergencies. Air-to-air -air. tire combat testing suggested the sick was a reasonable match for the F-4 Phantom. In a dogfight, with superior high altitude turn performance and overall maneuverability, I dared by the aircraft's lower wing loading, the Phantom had better radar operated by an additional crewman and could carry a load of up to four radar and four infrared AIM-9 Sidewinder missiles, while the AIM-100 missiles carried by the F-106 proved a disappointment for dogfighting over Vietnam. The F-4 had a higher thrust weight ratio with superior climb, better high speed low, altitude maneuverability, and could be used as a fighter bomber. Air combat experience over Vietnam showed the need for increased pilot visibility 
and the utility of a built-in gun, which had been added to the USAF Phantoms. In 1972, some F-106s were upgraded in Project 6 Shooter that involved fitting the F-106 with a new canopy without metal bracing, which greatly improved pilot visibility. Also added was an optical gun sight and provision for AM-61 Vulcan 20mm cannon. The M-61 Vulcan had 650 rounds of ammunition in the center weapons bay. The F-15A Eagle started replacing the F-106-1981 with the sixes typically passed on to Air National Guard units. One June 1983 and one August 1988, the Delta Darts were incrementally retired and sent to the Military Storage and Disposition Center in Arizona when the need for a high-performance full-scaled area of target drone was required. Starting in 1986, 194 of the surviving surplus aircraft were converted into target drones, and these were designated QF-106s and used for target practice vehicles under the Pacer 6 program by the Aerial Target Squad. The last was destroyed in January 1998. The drones were still capable of being flown as manned aircraft during the test. They were flown unmanned. The QF-106 replaced the QF-100 Super Sabre drone. The last shoot that took place at Holland on 20 February 1997. Between 1980 and 1986, the aircraft was modified for the purpose of lightning strike research and became known as the lightning strike plane and was struck 714 times without damage. On one hour, long flight at 30, 8,000 feet, 12,000 meters. In 1984, lightning struck the research aircraft 72 times. One significant modification was the replacement of the composite nose radium by a metallic radar. Although the maximum speed of the F-106 was match 2.3, during the lightning experiments, it was flown at subsonic speeds into clouds at 300 knots, 350 miles per hour, the aircraft was equipped with optical sensors, which consisted of a video camera and a light detector. On 2 February 1970, an F-106 of the 71st Fighter Interceptor Squadron, piloted by Captain Gary Faust, entered a flat spin over Montana. Faust followed procedures and ejected from the aircraft. The resulting change of balance caused the aircraft to stabilize and later land wheels up in a snow-covered field, suffering only minor damage. The aircraft, promptly nicknamed the Cornfield Bomber, was then sent back to base by rail, repaired and returned to service, and is now on display at the National Museum of the United States Air Force. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to please like and subscribe. If you have a topic you would like to suggest, leave a comment.